Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics with Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're going to be looking at the pretest, the online pretest for Chapter 6, which is about sampling distributions. The first question on this test is one reason that researchers nearly always gather data from samples of participants instead of entire populations is because A, samples provide more accurate data than populations, or B, population parameters are generally biased, or C, it can be impractical or even impossible to study populations, or D, samples have larger means than populations. Well, the answer to this one is C, is because it can be impractical or even impossible to study populations. Let me talk about the other ones very briefly. Um, A, samples provide more accurate data than populations. Um, that is never the case because a population is larger and a population is fully representative of itself, so it's going to be more accurate. Um, B, population parameters are generally biased. No, uh, uh, bias usually means a sample statistic that is attempting to estimate or tell you about a population parameter. A population parameter just is what it is. Uh, and D, uh, samples have larger means than populations. That No, that's just nonsense. Let, but let's take a quick look at C. The idea here is that you have this very large population. Well, let's start at the bottom. You have your sample, and then you have the sampling frame. These are people you can actually get a hold of, um, how you get them. And then there's the study population, which, you know, if you're looking at, like, UVU students would be the people who enrolled that year. Um, and the, but the theoretical population is always much, much larger and... You see, the, the study population can be impractical to get a hold of because it can be too big. But the theoretical population is theoretical. It might mean not just all the students at UVU right now, but everybody who could ever potentially be enrolled at UVU. And that, that's just impossible to study. So that's why we use samples. Um, I truthfully can't think of a single study I know that uses an entire population that is not taken as a representation of something else. So anyhow, there's that. Number two, according to the central limit theorem, the mean of the sampling distribution of means, and that should actually just have a mu sub x bar, will equal the mean of the original population divided by n minus 1, or the mean of the original population divided by the square root of n, or cannot be predicted without additional information, or the mean of the original population. Well, the answer is the mean of the sampling distribution of means is equal to the mean of the original population of raw scores that it came from. Uh, let's take a quick look at this one. Uh, what you can see, for instance, is that we've got this really fun, well, actually, I've got a little formula here that says mu sub x bar, and that is the mean of the sampling distribution of means is equal to mu sub x, and that's the, me the mean of the original population of raw scores. Here on the right, we've got a a little figure you're going to get to see several times, where a very funky looking distribution. But notice that its mean is right around 60. That's the score there in the middle. And then what we have is a whole bunch of sampling distributions made by sampling one or two or whatever scores. And what's important is that every one of these has a mean of right around 60. And in fact, if you look at the bottom right one, which is the one based on the largest samples, and so it's basically a normal distribution. It also is centered right there on 60. And so it has the same, all of these have the same mean for their distributions, even though they have different shapes. The next question, number three, is if a test has a population mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 6, then what is the z-score for a sample of 9 scores, n equals 9, with a mean of 76? And the choices are 6, 3, 1, and 2. Well, the answer to this one is 3. And let's take a look at it. What we have is, um, I'm writing this all out with Latin letters, regular letters, because it's very hard for me to do equations here. Um, so I'm using SE for the standard error is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So the standard deviation is 6, and that's divided by the square root of 9. That's the sample size. So the square root of 9 is 3, so we have 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So the standard error is 2. And then from there, I go to the second line, which has the Z score. So I have Z is equal to 
Then the capital M is for mean, and I'm putting mean sub S for sample and mean sub P for population. I realize I should be using an X bar and a mu, but hopefully you can still follow it. And we divide that by the standard error. In this case, it's 76 minus 70, and take that and divide it by two. So that's uh, six divided by two, and it's three. Okay, question number four. The central limit theorem says that when all possible samples of a sufficient size are taken from a population and their means are charted, that distribution of means will be uh, A, uniformly distributed, B, normally distributed, C, standardized, or D, platycurtic. Well, the answer is normally distributed. I'll show you in a second. Now, uniformly distributed means every answer is equally likely. That's not true. We're going to end up with this unimodal distribution. Standardized has to do with how the numbers are written across the bottom. And you may remember, when you standardize a distribution, you don't change its shape. And that's a different thing from getting a sampling distribution. And platycurtic, well, you know, that means it's, it's relatively flat, drops off in very few outliers. That's, that's just a different thing. Um, let's take a look at this one. You've seen this one before. We start with a very funky shaped distribution on the top left, and as you sample, and the samples get larger and larger, you get to the bottom right where you have an almost perfect normal distribution that has the same mean as the original one. Um, and that's how that works. Okay, question number five. The distribution of all possible samples of a given size, so that's, uh, for instance, 54 or 117, that are taken from a population and their means are charted, that distribution will be known as A, the sample distribution, B, the mean of the population, C, the sampling distribution of means, or D, a standard mean distribution. The answer is C, the sampling distribution of means. Let's, let's just, A, the sample distribution, well that is on one particular sample, so if you got a sample of 54 and you got their distribution, that's the sample distribution. The mean of the population, that's not a distribution at all. That's a parameter of a distribution. Um, and that's just going to be the center. And then D, a standard mean distribution. That's just nonsense made up. Anyhow, here's again how it works. The sampling distribution of means is a sampling distribution. It's made by taking uh, several samples, actually an infinite number of samples, getting their averages, for instance, their means, and then putting those into a new distribution. That's the sampling distribution of means because it's made through a process of sampling. Anyhow, that's it for the pretest, and we'll see you for the practice tests.